today, the definition of a successful student is harder to achieve than ever. With so many students striving for perfection, I often felt as though I was lost in the mix. And as I looked towards the most successful of my peers, I realized that although achieving so much, they didn't seem to be living, they were succeeding, and I think there's a big difference. And as I felt myself falling into the same trap, I realized that I needed to do something about it. So I did a survey of my peers, and it was on Twitter, and I, <laughs> and I found that 74% of them had suffered from anxiety, while only 37% of them knew someone with anxiety. So as you can see, there's kind of a disconnect there. People aren't telling their peers about it. And so I, in the survey, I prompted them to brainstorm ways that they could make change. And when I did that, many of them said that they felt hopeless and unable to make any change. I think that's why that they don't, they don't want to talk about it, because they don't think it will make a difference. And that's where they're wrong. They can make a difference. Students are actually instrumental in the battle against mental illnesses in youth. And I think that if we work together, we can achieve anything. We can defeat them. And I hope that by sharing my story, I encourage others to share their story as well. Because it's important to talk about it. It's important to share your story, to let it be known. And I'll share how I started to combat this for you. Because you aren't alone if you suffer from a mental illness. So here's my story. I've had anxiety since I was very young. I just didn't know it. So I would, so I thought that the reason, that I just had an overactive imagination, and that's why I had trouble at sleepovers. Like I couldn't fall asleep because I'd think of all these bad things that could happen to my family. It's kind of silly, honestly. But like, I'd be like, oh my gosh, what if my house sets on fire right now? And I'd be like sitting there in my bed like with my best friends, like unable to sleep. Or maybe I was just bad at math, and that's why I kept failing the timed multiplication ta tables, I'm sure a few of you remember them. Or maybe I was just shy, and that's why I found myself physically unable to speak in front of large groups of people. And I started to tell myself, I didn't know it was anxiety yet, but I started to tell myself, I just feel like, Okay, just because I imagined it means that it's not going to happen. And that kind of became my model. That became what I said and to myself. So I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get a bad grade on this math test. And I'd be like, nope, because I imagined it means it's not going to happen. My house is setting on fire or whatever, the silly thing I came up with. Nope, just because I imagined it means it's not going to happen. But as I approached high school, which is like the gateway to college and college applications and all of that, I got overwhelmed and I didn't... I realized that it wasn't quite as simple of a fix as I thought. And I started to get worse and worse. And as I got worse, I realized that I needed to do something about it. Because as I would get this doubt in my head, and as I would start to doubt myself, like my anxiety would say, okay, like you're not going to do well on this test. And then instead of approaching it with a positive mindset, I'd be like, oh my gosh, what if I can't do well on this test? What if I can't? And my bad attitude became me. It consumed me. And it was through this that I was finally like, okay, I kind of need help like, on this. And I went to my mom, and she was like, okay, let's go to the therapist. And I went to the therapist, and I was shocked to see that it was called anxiety, and it was a real thing that other people deal dealt with too. And I didn't realize that this like, anxiety was the like, root of all of my problems, and I was shocked. And so they, she told me, I was very hopeful, she said, oh, it's just a simple fix, it's medication, like we'll give you depression medication or anxiety medication. But the problem is, with, for me at least, and I know medication can be very helpful for other people, it didn't work, it made me very depressed. So I was a little worse off than I started, and eventually I realized this, and I was like, I just don't want to do anything, something's wrong with me, this, this isn't helping. And I got off of it, and then I realized that I was back on square, at square one, and I needed to do something about it. I could choose to become my bad attitude again and go back into that cycle, or I could, on the other hand, I could choose to have a positive mindset and approach it in a new way. And I decided to do something about it because I realized that I, the change had to start within me. It couldn't, there wasn't a simple fix. There wasn't like a pill that I could take. The, ch the change needed to be within me. So, I 
well, I kind of doubted myself for a while. I was like, can I really make this change? College applications are right around the corner. Can I do this? But I could. I could do it. And I believed in myself. So then I just realized that one day that having a bad day isn't up to chance. Having a bad test isn't up to chance. It's up to you. It's up to me. And I could change that. I could change something that was up to me. If I was having a bad day, if something went wrong or like... I don't know, maybe I spilled something over my favorite outfit, I don't know. And I could change that. I could be like, nope, I'm not going to let it be a bad day. I'm going to let it be a good day. And I think that would make all the difference. So I started applying that mindset to different areas of my life. And the first one I did, because this was last summer, was the ACT, the scary, menacing test that had been haunting me. <laughs> and I was like, OK, how can I make this, change, make this positive change? And so I walked into the ACT that Saturday morning like it was the place to be. I was so excited, so pumped, and I listened to my favorite song on the car ride over there, and I was ready. I was ready to take on everything. So I went in there, and with a bounce in my step, I gave everyone high fives. I was like, you guys can do this. You guys got it. And I took away the negativity of the ACT, and I made it into something positive. And although I do apologize to my fellow test takers, for having to deal with my over-enthusiastic high fives and cheering during the 10-minute break. I would like to say that, what if we all approached it that way? Because doing that way, I achieved my dream score. If we all approached the ACT like that, it wouldn't be scary anymore. It wouldn't be something that everyone dreads. It could be so much different. And instead, of, I'd like to challenge you, if you're a student, to instead of when you wake up in the morning of the ACT, don't be like, oh my god, I have to wake up early. Be like, okay, I'm waking up early, I get to do this. Listen to your favorite song in the car. Get pumped up, like, just <laughs> act like it's a sports game or event and be excited. And if you do that, it will make the world of a difference. Because the change comes from inside of you. And the thing that I see happening is that I was failing tests before I took it. The minute that you see that you doubt sets into your mind, is the minute that you've already failed. And you shouldn't do that to yourself. You're worth more than that. And I thought about how I can apply this to other areas of my life. So I started applying it to my interactions with other people. And through that, I realized that other people were just as insecure as I was. They were just as afraid of failing. So why make it worse on them by not being as kind and outgoing and nice as possible? So I did that. I started being outgoing and kind and nice. And people started doing the same to me. Even people that were mean to me, they started being nice just because I changed the way that I approached them. And by doing that, I really changed the atmosphere around me and I changed my mindset. Because I've noticed this phenomenon among high schoolers and older people and um, the younger people that um, they change that like, they don't like each other for like silly little things, like, oh, she wore the same shirt as me this one day in Janu last January, like, I don't like her now. Or maybe it, they did a, three points higher than me in math that one time, so I'm, we're, we're not okay now. We're not friends. But why? why? What good does that do to you? What good does bringing that negativity around you do? It only hurts yourself. So I would like to challenge you to not partake in that, to just be positive, just be nice. Someone's mean to you, be like, oh, okay, hi, <laughs> like, just be nice to them. Because if someone's as mean to someone as amazing as you, they're either having a bad day or they're, or they're just insecure, and either way, they probably need a friend. So why are you being mean to people? Why am I being mean to people, successful people, when I could be working to make myself one? And parents of children and teens with mental illnesses, or even just anxiety and stress, because that happens, um, I would like to say to you, to be the change that you wish to see in your children, because they look up to you. They're mo they model themselves after you, whether they know it or not. So have a positive mindset. If something's going wrong at work, be like, OK, that's OK, we got this. Or if someone's mean to you in public, don't give them a nasty glare and then walk away. Just be like, oh, it's okay, like, I'm sorry, or... And just, like, change the way you approach other people, because they notice when you're in, like, so have some mom drama with some other person, or something else <laughs> is going on. Because they notice that, and they are like, okay, it's okay to treat other people like that. It's okay to do that. I know you want to help your children, and this is how you do it. And I would like to challenge all of you to 
approach everything with a new and positive mindset because it makes so much of a difference. It changed my life. If we approach people and love each other, and instead of just letting our insecurities take over, take over, the, take over yourself first, reclaim yourself, and you will, it will make all the difference. So go out into the world with a new and positive mindset. And finally, to anyone suffering from a mental illness, I would like to let you know that the bad times don't last unless you let them. So don't let them. Go make change. Do what you want to do. Because I believe in you. And in the end of the day, it is all in your mind. And that's the amazing thing about it, because you can change it.